One of Ohio State football's top targets in the 2024 class, Jordan Seaton, the number 15 player and top tackle in all of America, made a decision, and it was not pro Ohio State. He picked Colorado, which puts Ohio State's class still at four. Is that correct? Four so offensive four. linemen in this class. What is losing out, Andrew? This is Stephen Means and Andrew coming to you from inside the Woody. What does losing out on Jordan Seaton mean for the class? Well, for we'll take this in two different directions. I think losing on the field is big because he was the biggest fish left that Ohio State was after in this particular class. He was the number 15 overall player. He was the number, per the 247 composite rankings, he was the number one offensive tackle. He was the number four player in Florida. He plays at IMG Academy. So you know that like if there ever was a dude on the offensive line that could show up and contribute as a freshman, it's Jordan Seaton. You know, that is the exact type of kid that it would take because it is very hard to play offensive or defensive line at the college level in your freshman year just because there's strength, there's technique. You're going up against people that are four years older than you and that have been in a weight room where strength matters on those positions. And these guys have been in a weight room for four more years than you. That's a really tough thing to do. But if there ever was a kid, it would be Seton. So losing him on the field hurts because Ohio State, we've talked about their offensive line so much on Buckeye Talk. We've talked about the progression that they had. They did, you know, end the season on a high note. I thought you know they did progressively get better but you still need those type of guys on the offensive line on the field that's that's one thing I think what this would have represented though is even bigger because he would have been their highest ranked offensive line commit since Paris Johnson in 2020 and even then Paris Johnson was a Cincinnati kid Ohio State could recruit him with a car like you could drive you could you could go recruit him before lunch and be back you could leave 9 a.m. and be back for lunch like it is a very easy thing to go recruit Paris Johnson he would have been the highest rated offensive line commit since 2018 when they got Nicholas Petit for air out of Florida. So like what it would have signified, I think, is a step that this offensive line is getting that high, high talent, high quality talent. But you don't get him. The offensive line class stands at four. And I, I think it's just another thing for Ohio State fans to look at and say, God, wish we had that one guy. Wish we were able to upgrade here. And they just weren't able to do it. So I think it means a lot on the field, but I think what he would have signified for this class means it just as much as well. So we're assuming that the class is done. They're just going to land at four for the rest of the time going into signing day, which is two weeks from now. Yep. Yeah, so right now they have Ian Moore. Uh, I believe he's number 134. He's out of Indiana. They have the Armstrong Twins out of St. Ed's up in Cleveland. Uh, they're in the 400s. They're three-star commits uh, on the offensive line. They're big boys. They're like 6'5". So, you know, you get two two big guys, uh, two twins. So it's going to be tough to tell them apart for a couple of years. So you bring in those guys from Cleveland, and then they just signed Gabe Van Sickle. Gabe Van Sickle committed on Thanksgiving. Uh, he's 683, I believe, in the class. So you have guys from kind of all over the Midwest, but Seton would have been the prize of this class, and they don't get him, but now they're going to be at four for the uh, 24 class, it looks like. So get the text. Signing day is about two weeks away from now, 614-350-3315, and we'll continue to have this conversation on our pod, Buckeye Talk. So listen to Buckeye Talk wherever you get podcasts.